Hey there, Banco fans! Welcome back to another episode of Banco Rise of a Phenomenon. In this 2002 episode, we'll be taking a look at Banco's most successful year ever. 2001 was a very profitable year for LEGO. Thanks to Banco, the company's economy was more than stable. And before they realized it, Banco had become a franchise. Remember how the first sets were part of the LEGO Technique brand? Well, after 2001, Banco became its own brand. So we'll have to somehow continue Banco's story. And in order to do that, the two will have to face any threats. Rahi were no more a problem now that Makuta had been defeated. What sort of enemy could they face this time? Well, how about the most menacing, destructive, chaotic, devastating, and powerful robots ever created? That's right, you wake one, you wake them all. The Borok Swarm! The Borok slept in nests that extended far below the surface of the island of Matinui. That's right. These machines have been living beneath the island for thousands and thousands of years before the tour, or even the dragon came here. They had only one mission, to destroy the island of Matinui by turning into the barren rock that Legends claim once was. But as I said, they have been asleep all this time long, waiting for the signal to hatch. Wait. Waiting. While they're on it, everything is peace in Matinui. The Toa keep on protecting the Turaga, and of course, the heart of the village, the Tahan. 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 What's the, what's the meaning of this? What's wrong with me? Please help me. Yeah. Hi. Well, then. Please help me, you. What's going on? Oh, oh. oh man. Oh. Oh, I hit my head with some kind of newspaper. Oh, I guess I better read because it fell out of nowhere. Let's see. Let's see. <clears throat> More representatives against Lego. The Lego group has been warned for unauthorized use of words from the Mart language as names for their characters of the Bionicle brand. In order to avoid lawsuits, the Lego group will have to stop using those names. But how are they going to cover this up in the story? I mean, we have we have grown used to using those names. Then suddenly they're going to change them all like like it's nothing. But how can this be possible? <laughs> Throw it on coming. Oh, thank the great beings I can say your name. Do you have the answers I'm looking for? Alright, uh, uh, hold on a second. Okay, go on. Well, thanks for your information, Trigon. So, yeah, many names got changed, but some of them stayed. Like Towa, Turaga, Pohatu, Kanoki, and so on. What, did Lego got permission to use those names and like all the other ones had to change? But, well, this would only become one of the many Bionicle reasons excuses. You see, for every plot hole or unexplained element, they would always have an answer. The Towa keep on being the heroes which protect the Turaga and... <laughs> Matoran. After Makuta's defeat, it all seemed like peace would be restored, until that signal which the board were waiting came. The two I went to Takon only to find out it had been invaded by the Borok. Not only there, but across all of Matinu. Using their elemental powers, the Borok crumbled mountains to dust, leveled jungles and unleashed floodwaters. They were everywhere, and they were unstoppable. Not only were they destroying everything, but they were also brainwashing all the inhabitants with the Krana. You see, the Krana are living creatures housed inside the Borok. They provide the guiding intelligence of the swarm, telling them what to do and also giving them a special power. The Borok will take the masks off of Amatoran, Turaga, or Toa and replace it with a Krana, which will control the mind of the victim just like an infected Kanaki. The only difference is that the Krana will force them to serve the swarm. <laughs> Desperate for finding answers, the Toa asked for the Turaga's help, who told them that the Borg's greatest strength is also their greatest weakness, the Krana. Without it, 
they cannot keep on with their mission and are eventually stopped. The Trag also said that in order to defeat the Borg Swarms, the Twelve would have to collect all eight varieties of Krana from each of the six Borg breeds. Tanok, Galok, Korak, Parak, Nuvuk, and Livak. So the Twelve journeyed again on a scavenger hunt across all of Matanui, confronting the Swarms and taking their Krana to save their beloved home. It was hard though. Whenever a Borok fell, a hundred more would appear to carry on the important mission. And if that was enough, there were Vorogva helping them. Vorogva are scouts and messengers for the swarm. Unlike the Borok, they are not controlled by the Krana, so they will often bring Krana to fallen Borok so that they can continue on with their mission. Outnumbered and under constant attack, the Twelve found a way to win and got all of the Kranas needed. They brought them to the Borok nest where the Barak were waiting for them. The Barak, Kado and Gadok, are the queens of the Borok swarms. They communicate telepathically with the Krana and also with the Borokva in order to give them the instructions needed to complete their mission. They have all the powers of the Borok and get more powerful the closer they get to each other. Interesting that they're queens and not kings, huh? But, well, not counting Mantanui on Nine Game, which is full of non canon elements, there were like four female characters in Bionicle, so I guess it was a fair move. The Twelve fought courageously, but Kalog and Gallo were too strong. So strong that not even with the extra two armors were the two able to defeat them, until they united their powers and trapped the Barak into a Toa seal, a cage made of crystalline protodermis which can only be lowered by the powers of the same twelve which created it in the first place. Suddenly, the ground started to shake. Then, the twelve fell through the ground and ended up on large tubes which were beneath the floor. Those tubes were filled up with a substance known as Energized Protodermis, which started to cause changes in each of them. It felt painful, and it felt powerful. When the Toa emerged, they weren't just Toa or Toa Mata as they would later be called. Oh, <laughs> they were Toa Nuva, stronger, more powerful, more invincible, more badass. Liwa used to only rise in the air. Well, that would glide faster than an aquatic rocket. I hope we'll from lava, water could climb canyons, Kapaka could ski, and Lua could dig. Pure awesomeness. The Borg says were incredible. They could roll up like a ball and then change to attack mode. They all had different weapons which represented their respective elements. By pushing down the lever on the back of the Borog, the gears will cause the Borog's head to launch forward. Then, inside their faceplates, they held the Krana, which they will launch at enemies in order to control them. The new Tuanuva sets were really good. They had all sorts of new pieces, such as the new Kanohi masks, which were thicker this time, I don't know why. Pohara had the same leg function as the previous Mata set, but this time he could move both legs, which was really nice. The new Nuva armor, which covered both shoulders, the chest, and in Pato's case, his feet, just like the Mana version. His new claws look really cool, and you can join them together to form the Cotton Ball, which Pohara would kick and use as an attack. Overall, the Nuva sets were really an improved version of the Mana in many aspects, which made them really worth buying. Well, bottom line, this was a really good year. We got great sets and a great story, all together to the same Bionicle year. But, no line is foolproof, a Bionicle will have to learn that the hard way. Join me in the next review in which we'll be taking a look at Bionicle's first failure.